Okay, it's time for brainstorming. Let's talk about business ideas. In 2015, I was a mature and international student studying international business at graduate school in Malaysia. During my study of one and a half a year, I've seen the Malaysian society from a different perspective as non-Malaysian. So today, let me tell you what sort of business ideas I came up with. Of course, you can make use of the business theories that I describe and even take my business ideas if necessary. Before we get started, let me give you some basic viewpoint. For a great business idea, you should think of it in the context of 3C analysis, which are the combination of company, competitor, and customer. Namely, you can find out an area called the sweet spot by knowing what your company can provide, what your competitor can provide, and what your customer needs. Sweet spot is an area where you can provide what your customers want although your competitors don't or can't provide. You can keep the competitive advantage when you embark on business in this spot. So, it is key for you to have or to know different perspectives that your competitors don't in finding the spot. Now, you know why no Malaysians like me have an advantage to find the sweet spot in Malaysia, right? However, it could be difficult for you to find what your competitor can't provide. Because in today's highly developed economy, you will be surrounded with many larger capital enterprises which can produce anything once they hit a business idea. Yes, you are an existence like an ant which stands up to giant elephant, but it should be a lot easier for you to find what your competitors don't provide yet. Even if such corporate giants follow or steal your business model, you'll still have a room for expanding your business here before they know it. It's called first mover advantage based on blue ocean strategy. Some of you may have heard of them. Next, I'll give you two ideas today. As I said, I stayed in Malaysia five years ago. So, if these ideas based on my feelings sound out of date, beside the point, or already existed in Malaysia, just love them away, okay? But I'd be delighted if my ideas here are useful for your future move. Also, these ideas are not always implementable to anyone because you all have different backgrounds. I just came up with the following in the light of the series above, but I won't do them due to my current lifestyle. First idea, unique flavors of shisha. This is an idea mainly focusing at sweet spot. Shisha is a molasses-based tobacco widely provided at many bars in Malaysia. At the moment, Shisha is not so popular in Japan. The Japanese often develop import products for Japanese oriented to the bone. But due to its unpopularity, Shisha was not yet well developed here. Meanwhile, Malaysian people like Japanese foods too. And also, I know everybody knows Sakura and Matcha. So, I came up with an idea to produce shisha flavors with Japanese ingredients. Matcha? Of course you can! Many Malaysians know Sakura for cherry blossom viewing. But in recent years, we have more foods of Sakura flavor in tea, ice cream, cookie, and candy. Why not shisha? Also, we have a lot more. Ume? Yuzu, Hinoki, and Haskap. Also, do you know lavender? Lavender is typically popular as souvenir products in Hokkaido. It smells really good and has healing effect. So, we have a variety of lavender products out here. Why not shisha? 
second one, classy onigiri. This is an idea mainly focusing at first mover advantage. Onigiri rice bowl is a signature food of Japan. Since onigiri came to Japan from East Asia along with rice cultivation, it has been always a part of our life while being made mainly at home, followed by sushi. Nowadays, onigiri has also become popular among other nations. I also saw some stores carrying onigiri in Malaysia while I stayed there five years ago. By the way, do you know that in Japan, more and more cafe are beginning to serve Instagrammable onigiri? Needless to say, just go into the world of photogenic onigiri for a while. These are absolutely different from traditional onigiri. This trend has just emerged a few years ago here in Japan. I'm pretty much sure it will catch on in Malaysia too, since you have your own similar culture of nashirema. Speaking of photogenic trend of Japanese signature food, you know dorayaki, bean jam pancake, right? Yes, it's the favorite food of Doraemon. Dorayaki is also one of traditional foods in Japan. Come to think of it, recently, I have seen new types of dorayaki here and there. You might be able to take the idea because I know that dorayaki is also famous in Malaysia and maybe all you need could be seen in your kitchen right now. Yes, chances are everywhere. Keep it up! That's all for today. I'm Keikos Terimakashi Kurana Menon Tam. See you next time.